This is the X Vive PX Portable 3 Channel Personal Mixer. I've seen a lot of videos about this. X Vive sent this to me. Um, I wanted to do a review on this because I think it'll be cool to see different use cases for how to use this. I will say they don't get any input on this video. They don't get to see it before I release it. And all of these opinions and thoughts are my own. So let's dive in and see what's inside the box. A manual. Some adapters for XLR to TS. An ethernet cable. The dongle from Cat5 to XLR. And the actual mixer itself. All right, so let's look at the feature set of this system. Um, I'm just gonna start with how I would essentially hook it up from end to end. So let's start with these adapters. I think this is a really smart move. This, these are really useful. Obviously, I'm gonna lose them in a second, but they're great because if you're on the go and you need to quickly adapt your XLR females to TS males for whatever reason, let's say the mixer you're using that you wanna plug into doesn't have XLR outs, Boom, pop these on, good to go. Secondly, this dongle is very cool. First of all, braided, awesome, not gonna tangle. Second of all, Cat5 and it's barrel locking, so that's awesome, which means you're gonna plug in the Cat5 cable and because of this thing, it's not going anywhere. You've got three XLR females and then you've got a little power power delivery thing right here so you can use any sort of one spot it's nine volt and it can power the mixer up to 200 feet over power over ethernet which is really cool next thing in the box is this ethernet cable uh, i believe it's cat5 again with the barrel locking system so that way if somebody tugs on your cord it's not going anywhere it doesn't say how long this is. I could measure it, but I don't want to. Uh, but it does say that uh, it can transmit audio and power for up to 200 feet. So if you don't want to use this thing, get any run of the mill Cat5 cable from Best Buy or Amazon, and you can just plug it in and use that and be good to go. Finally, on this mixer, it's pretty rad. Um, all of the knobs all feel like there's good resistance. So if you're playing and it rubs up or your arm hits it or whatever, you're not gonna knock everything out of whack immediately. Um, you've got three inputs. Um, and then on the top, you've got your volume knob and then you've got your headphone jack. It's just an eighth inch, so be mindful of that. Although I, I don't know what headphones nowadays are all quarter inch, but who cares? Uh, and then you've got a little battery indicator if you're using the battery compartment. And you've got this little nifty switch to switch between battery power or power over ethernet. So let's say you lost your one spot, whatever, but you got batteries inside, you can just use this and good to go. Inside of this is really cool because it is two AAA batteries and it says that it lasts up to five hours on the battery powered. If you can see inside there, it's got three dip switches for each of the inputs. And essentially what this is doing is telling you which side of the headphone it's going to. So you've got left and rights on every channel, on and offs. So if you wanna do inputs one and two as a stereo mix coming from Monitor World, one could be your left. So you're gonna put that dip switch on on the left side and then off on the right side. Two could be the right side. So you're gonna have the dip switch off on the left side and on on the right side. And then let's say three is your click. Then you can have it on going mono or you can put it in either ear if you're a weirdo. And I think that is a really cool feature. I was nervous because it didn't make that clear up front because I was nervous about just having all mono going straight into my head. Stereo is just a nice game changer. And I really like the build of this. It's cool, it's got a little belt clip. It's interesting that it's kind of like on your, on your belt, it's, it's upside down. So one is at the bottom, two is in the middle, three is up top. I suppose that's because if you're like looking over you know, at your side, you can kind of see, okay, one, two, three. Um, and then you're adjusting it from left to right, 
you know, your point of view instead of having to try and think of it backwards while it's on your hip and you're in the middle of playing one-handed while you're adjusting everything. So that's cool, dig that. And it just feels really nice. Everything seems like it's built really nicely. All right, now I'm gonna plug this thing in and actually have a listen and see what the audio quality is like. Okay, first thoughts, it sounds really good. It sounds excellent. Now, here are my critiques and I'll start with what we were just listening to. Um, I have everything line level out of my studio and when I plugged this in, the signal was way too hot and it was distorting. So, a couple of things to note on that. If you do bring this out or you're using it in your studio or you're using it on the road, that's gonna be the first thing that you think of in terms of receiving signal. Make sure that it's going to be, I don't know, not that loud. But the cool thing is, is there was a lot of headroom on this. So when I cranked it, I could still get a ton of volume out of it. My second critique would be simply for the fact that an ethernet cable has four strands inside of it. So realistically, you could be passing four channels of audio. I don't know what that means for the size of this, whether you would have to make this smaller or make this bigger, but I just feel like we just completely missed out on an opportunity to have four channels come into this thing. Because if I'm a drummer, here's what I'm thinking about. A stereo mix coming down here, I'm thinking about tracks coming down here, and then I'm thinking about the click track coming down here. Or I'm thinking of a stereo mix and then a stereo mix of my drums and then being able to you know, adjust that. A recommendation would be make one of these knobs a simple stereo input um, and then that way you're just guaranteed a stereo input and then you could still have a more me if you're a vocalist and then the click track or whatever the case is. You've got a lot of options but I just feel like we missed out on an opportunity to go ahead and just send four channels down the ethernet since it's capable of doing so. Second thing, while we're on the subject of the ethernet cable, this thing is super heavy duty and it's great and I love it. It doesn't say if it's shielded or not. And the only reason I'm considering this is because let's say you're using this on the road and you're running this through the stage, all of a sudden it gets dropped on the backline power line or something like that. And if this is unshielded, you might run into some interference. You might not, but that might be an issue. So that could be something to uh, consider. Again, not a big deal because you could just replace this cable with a shielded ethernet cable. Thirdly, my last note would be the simple fact that this can run off of nine volts and it's powered at the other end. Those little nine volt one spots probably cost 60 cents and it would have been amazing to just go ahead and include that in the box. Again, you can get one for $9 uh, from Jeff Bezos, but just to have that in the box would have really set me at ease because all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm gonna go test this. Oh, I don't know where a nine volt little hotspot is. I should have a billion of them, but I don't. Uh, so I had to go find AAA batteries, not a big deal. Include batteries, include a, a, a hotspot, whatever. Now, in terms of where I can see this being used, I think this is an excellent piece of equipment for a drummer that is, you know, kind of coming up and, you know, let's say you're on a road gig, uh, but you're not necessarily carrying an audio package yet, or you don't have a crew yet, or you don't have, um, you know, a monitor engineer or anything like that. So you're relying on the house people to give you a mix. And then if I remember correctly coming up, trying to be the first of three of uh, an opening act and get your mix dialed within your 30 minute load in and sound check with a house guy who's never seen your input list or your band before is an absolute disaster. So to be able to just tell him, hey man, just give me a mix of the band, a little bit of vocals, whatever. Give me, give me a two mix with my drums on top, whatever. Then I don't have to worry about uh, where the click track or the tracks are going because I could just have him send the mix down input one, 
have him send my drum mix down input two for a little more me, and then have him send the click track down input three. And then that way I'm not sitting here like this and this, and then my mix is finally good by the time the show is over. So this is a perfect use case for that. I can also see this in the studio for this exact same thing. So instead of a really expensive uh, monitoring system, you could be doing the same thing, you know, as you would on the road with giving yourself a two mix and then making this knob a little more me. Let's say you've got a vocalist in the studio and they can't decide where they want their vocals to sit in the mix. Instead of them asking you for more or less, more or less, boom, right here, give them the power. And I think that is a really cool feature. I could also see this in a setting like a bar band where the bar doesn't have the budget for, you know, a uh, monitor engineer or the little Aviom systems or, you know, whatever the, or the Behringer systems or whatever those things are, the little P16 personal monitoring systems. Just throw a bunch of these around stage and then you've got the same thing. You can just dedicate one of these knobs to each instrument. So you've got your mix here and then you've got the more me here. So the guitarist has one and then if he needs more guitar, you get that here. The vocals has one and if he needs more vocals, you get, you get that here. The bassist have one. If he wants more bass, you get that here, but you've got all of the instruments coming down one and two. And I love how small it is. Among all of the things that I think are great, I think the footprint is excellent. I think the locking barrel ethernet is excellent. I think the power over ethernet is excellent. I just wish they had included the power adapter. So overall for the price point, which is $129 if you get it from zounds.com, I'll put a link in the description. This is a great deal. So you, you have other, like these exist, right? You've got the Behringer version, which is like $60. You've got the Shure, PSM9 or whatever, which is like $500. And that's just a stereo pack. Uh, and then you've got like a PreSonus version, which is again, $130. But they are not giving you three separate channels. They're not putting it over ethernet and they're not giving you power over ethernet, which again is just such a huge feature that I cannot stress like how cool that is. For all of those things to take into account, I think anyone from an amateur to a professional can find use for this, uh, but I can specifically see a lot of up and coming bands using this. I can see this in bars, I can see this in churches, I can see this again, if you're a baby act and you don't have a budget, these little things will come in handy. I've always been nervous about like what a company is putting out and the quality and the build, but I am grateful that I got to actually hear some music through this and it sounds great. I don't think you will be disappointed with this. And because of that, I'm going to keep this and actually incorporate it into my setup because I can absolutely see the use for this in my studio and on the road. And I think this will be a great addition to anybody who purchases it. This was my first time doing a video like this. Uh, so if you love seeing a review type video, go ahead and let me know. If you didn't like it so much, also let me know so I don't do any more of these videos. Uh, but I appreciate you all and I'll see you in the next one. Oh,